Good morning, good morning, everyone, and welcome to week number two. And we had a really, really good start of the week in the discussions. You may not be so happy with the assignment, but we're going to go over that a little bit. And it's okay. A lot of times in my class, and that's why I actually, if I emailed you and said that there's a concern with your grade, I'm not attacking you. Honestly, I look at it. This is five and a half weeks. It's so short that if I don't address things in the very first week, you can fall behind so easily. And I honestly want you to do really well in this class. And it, once you become unmotivated, then it's kind of difficult. And not personality conflicts and so forth, because I have no personality conflict with anyone. But, but you may, may not appreciate how I teach, and that's okay. I'm part of the world of people that you're going to meet in this world, and you're going to get diversity on meeting them. You're not going to like everyone. But one thing that I really want you to do is I really want you to succeed everyone. There's not one person that I ever want not to succeed. And most important, I want you to learn. So while I still have your attention for the first minute, those that will escape out, I really want you to watch the classes because I really teach you how to make an A in my class. I tell you exactly what it is that I want. And that's okay. If you don't understand it, reach out to me. In five minutes, I can get you to understand this class and to get an A in this class. It's up to you. But most importantly, I really want you to watch this class because again, I teach you exactly what it is that I'm looking for. Now, with these PowerPoint presentations, I wish it really wasn't the first week. I wish it was maybe the next the week two, maybe this week or later into the term because it's it's not an easy assignment. It's a little different than what you're used to, but it's just a written assignment with a bunch of pictures. But where learn your instructor's quirks. Mine is research and it's APA. You may not like APA, but I didn't pick it. I didn't create it. Uh, it's rules that I even have to follow to be successful myself. And you should never, ever lose points on APA ever because you have to do it. And I showed you various ways to be able to access it and get it done properly because it's either right or it's wrong. In my time, I had to have the APA manual. I looked up the resource and I looked at it from there. And you could be able to do that too. Even Word has where you could do proper APA. That if you were to go over here to Word, I'm opening it up, and I'm going to share my screen when it decides it wants to open wherever it wants to open. It even does APA for you as well. And so that's what's really neat. And all you have to do is fill in the blanks. That's all you have to do. And so if I go right over here and watch the classes again, if you get tired of listening to me, I understand. I'm not, that's not exciting. I try to make it as exciting as possible, but maybe watch it in sections. I don't know, but I did show you how to go to the online library. I showed you some great resources and I may have done it quickly, but you could do it on your own time in different parts as well. And just go over those sections to be able to get it right. So if I go over here to references up here at the top, there's your sources. And if I go ahead and click on add, it even does it. And so if it's a website, if it's a journal article, whatever it is, and you fill the blanks of the information that you have, and then you go ahead and click OK. And at the end, you go ahead and make a bibliography and it's done. It's that simple. That's it. However, students are having a challenge with internal citation. Remember, I know other instructors, they do enforce APA, and I know that they kind of show you how to do it, but grade wise, I don't necessarily think, and it's not their fault, they shouldn't have to, enforce it strict enough. That means lowering your grades. I am one of the few instructors at this school that does force you to do APA, but you have an opportunity to fix it without affecting your grade at all, but you learn it. You learn it in this class, you learn it for all the classes into the future, if it's at Rasmussen or if you choose to go to another school, because trust me, at other schools that I teach at, there is not this forgiveness. It's This is your grade. You have to do APA. You should have learned it. So just look at it as a learning opportunity. Anyway, so if I go over here and uh, I'm sharing the top. What, what screen did I? Okay, I didn't show 
you word. I'm sorry, it was on the wrong screen. I'm sharing the one up here. So if I go over here to references up here at the top, you're usually at the home tab. But if I go to references and I go ahead and click on insert, add new source. And there it is. So all you have to do is go ahead and pick what kind of a source it is. And then you fill in the blanks and go ahead and hit OK. And then when you're done, you go ahead and click bibliography and pick which one it is. And your reference section is done. It's that simple. Don't overthink APA. Again, it's either right or it's wrong. In my eye, because I've done this for so long, I think it's easy. Because all you're doing is you plop, plop, plop. That's the end. Now, when it comes to the internal citation, all it is is last name, year, and page number if it's available. If there's no page number, end the parentheses, and that's the end. So in this case, it would be uh, open parentheses, Chen, 2000, I don't remember, 23, page 123, and that's it. That's all you need for your internal citation. There are different variations of their multiple authors and so forth, but that's what I'm looking for. That's all. So you have your in, in, incredible sentence, comma, uh, there is a citation. Chen, done. That's all. That's all internal citation is. Then at the very, very end, I'm going to go right over here and I'll hit internal. Uh, I'll go ahead and click on bibliography, hit my big bibliography, done. Don't overthink it. Now, for, for in the class, if you go ahead, there's tons of resources. Watch these videos. Don't let it go get overwhelm you. If there, you see variations, it's because it's different types of references you're you're referring to. Most of you are going to be referring to the ProQuest or those online resources. So that you're, it's always going to be that style. But I already taught you how to copy and paste from the article from ProQuest and EBSCO so that you have your references. But then we have to address the internal citation. And this is where students lost points. If you lost points only on internal citation, fix it, resubmit it, tell me that you resubmitted it, and I'll change your grade. It's that simple. I'm not out to get anyone. But if you go into the announcement section here and you go further down, you have internal citation. And here, Author year. If there's a page number, great. Add the page number. If there's two authors, there's three authors. There may be your organization. There's parenthetical and narrative citation. I stick with parenthetical. Done. Don't overthink it. Once you think, you're going to get it wrong. So don't overthink it. I have to print this and copy it and make sure that I do it verbatim because if it's not this, it's wrong and you lose points. Don't lose points. It's either right or it's wrong. You just plop, plop, plop. That's how I look at when it comes to APA internal citations. Here are some more examples. Here, author's last name, year, page number, done. But if you don't have the page number, there, there's the year. Now, narrative, you tell a goofy story. Mark Master thinks marketing is great. So master, open parentheses, 2023, close parentheses, marketing is great then I know to refer to it. However, me personally, I only stick to parenthetical citation. That's it. That's all I do. And that's what I expect you to do. Sometimes when you get creative, it's not wrong, but you could possibly get it wrong. And then I have no clue what on earth you're doing. Just do it this way. You're done. That simple. That simple. See the organization scribber and there was no date for this particular article. And then here is the reference source, Scribber, no date, how to cite APA. And if I wanted to, and you could go ahead and find that article that happens to be right there and done. It's that easy. Don't get creative with APA. There's no creativity. It's right or it's wrong. It's that simple. OK, don't lose points on APA. It's an easy points. Three articles from ProQuest, EBSCO, APA, that's 15 points. That will cost you an A on this paper, and it shouldn't be. You should not lose points on it. I cannot talk about that ever more. I found some cute little videos for you to be able to watch. Here's references, and 
that may be what's confusing is because, okay, now here's one type of reference and then what's this type of reference? Which reference am I supposed to use? Well, what type of a reference is it? Is it a journal? Is it a website? Is it a newspaper article? And then you follow those guidelines and that's it. It's not, okay, here's one way to do it and then here's another way to do it. Then here's another way to do it. Then here's another way to do it. It's all the same. If it's a website, this is how you do it. If it's a magazine, this is how you do it. If it's a newspaper article, this is how you do it. That's it. That's it. So, what I recommend everyone to do, and I'm going to go over the assignment a little bit. And the reason why I go over these assignments is that these are peer groups, and these are other instructors and students that are with you. And I'll show you their work. It's not to discourage you, it's not to say that one work is better than another because all of you are very creative and say different things in different ways. But what I'm pointing out is the structure of it, if it makes sense. Because again, I'm teaching you how to get an A in this class, as well as understanding legal and the law in terms of marketing. So, what I want you to do on your next assignments is in the grade book, oh shoot, Ooh, uh, in the grade, uh, in the grade book. Okay, I almost shares. I well, you know, I would have seen anything. Let me go back over here. What I want you to do is in the content area. Sorry about that. Grade didn't pop up right away. Anyway, so I'm gonna go right over here and in the section. I want you to. I'm trying to break this down to make it easier for you to understand. And of course, all the students that won't watch the class, what am I to do? Okay, and that's how I kind of know if you watch the class or not. But let's go ahead and go into the course project. The first thing I want you to do is, I want you to look at the grading. Of course, read the assignment, watch the video of this assignment, and then I want you to look at the grading rubric printed. I don't care. But what I'm looking for is each section, and I'm looking for you to support it. So in this particular section that we're looking at in section 2.A is to discuss the differences between legal and ethical issues in marketing. A lot of students just didn't have it. You talked about law and marketing, but that wasn't the point that I was looking for. I want to know the differences between legal and ethics. Then your opinion supported with fact for that section. I don't care about how many billions of users that uh, uh, Facebook has in this section. I don't care about the jolliness and why companies should stay legal. Well, you can throw that in there. But this is what I'm looking for, to discuss the differences between legal and ethical issues in marketing. Your ideas supported with fact, with APA reference, then, of course, in the reference section, and first internal citation, then references at the end. Now, all students pretty much got this one. This was easy. Share two examples of companies that have made legal and ethical mistakes. Well, if you're working on Volkswagen, I expect Volkswagen's website to be in the reference section because unless you know everything about Volkswagen in your head because you're CEO, which you probably are not, because I know who the CEO is, and they're not in my class today, so you have to refer to it. If it's on Tylenol, you have to refer to it because you're using that as a source. Anytime I see numbers, uh, Tylenol made $7 billion last week. Well, where's your internal citation? They have 83% market share. Where's your citation? Explain and then explain why companies should be concerned with law and the legal matters. I'm looking for your idea supported with facts, internal citation, references at the end. Then the others are just give me's. They really are. And I just, I'm, I didn't want to change the grading rubric. I don't think we should be grading on six slides and then uh, are the pictures pretty and so forth. I really just pretty much give you a good grade unless it's missing APA style or you're missing references and so forth. Those notes, if you didn't have any, again, you either had them or you didn't, and they were either adequate or they weren't. Then, of course, here's the 15 points right there. That's what I'm looking for you to do is look at each section, support that with facts, not out of your head. Because students will just carry on about how social media is wonderful. Well, are you doing it on Facebook? 
Are you doing it on Instagram? Why are you bringing it up? So, um, I want you to look at each of those sections. So that's the first thing you need to do is look at the grading rubric, print it, check it off. Facts, check, support. I mean, opinion, which is your ideas, check, support, check. Then it deserves an A. I can disagree with it, it doesn't matter. I can agree with it, you have no facts. I, it doesn't matter, you're still getting a bad grade. Forget my, my horse voice. Anyway, so this is what I'm looking for each of your assignments, including this one. So what I do when I'm grading an assignment, I forget about the title page, but I count it. One, two, three, four, five, six, then there's the reference page. So six, and then I'm looking at these references. There's three from a journal, ProQuest, Journal of Marketing, uh, Bloomberg Business, okay? I can't see the one, but anyway, see these are your three resources and they're right here. And then I go back and start looking at your assignment. I never graded like this before, and I've never been known as the hard professor before either. I'm just looking for you to do your internal citation and your references. That's it. That's all I'm looking for because you got this stuff. You all have this stuff. So legal and marketing issues. So looking at this to get into it, there's the internal citation. Um, has Heffy and Melo at 2017. If I were to go back down here, there should be the reference for it. And there it is. And if I want to go look at it, I could. Then if I go back up here to the top of uh, ethical issues. Now I'm looking for the differences between the two. So this was a good one. And um, if I took points off, it would have been because I was looking for the differences between the two. A lot of students just got stuck on legal issues and marketing. Well, I understand that's great, but I'm looking for the differences between the that legal and that um, ethical issues in marketing. Okay, so here is legal, here's ethical. So they got full points. So there it is. They just put it on two different slides, which is perfectly fine. Here's example one, here's example two. Then here, why should we consider? Exactly, you're putting it right there into the bullets. Uh, why should it be concerning them? And there's your reference, done. This is 100%, great, great, great project. OK, now, do you notice and this is pretty much good uh, in terms of grammar, you see these oh, that's all normal and so forth. You can see that there. Um, that's a grammatical issue. Remember, if you downloaded Grammarly, it will do this all for you, but it's it's minor. I had personally I had grammar issues. I took a lot of classes to make me better at grammar, so I don't necessarily get into much grammar unless I have no clue what on earth you're saying at all so here's another one it, it's good here legal ethical matters here's illegal issues then went right into uh went into see i may have taken points off not having the ethical part because they did have the legal part and then here is uh volkswagen here's nestle there's the example there is the internal citation there's a uh, ethical lapse, uh, foundations of success. Uh, and if we go further down, and there's the reference section, perfect. Now, this one was a little creative, okay? And I really did like this one because of this, the differences versus similarities, and it was right down on one page. However, the problem with this one was just merely the internal citation. So there it is, it's all of it. But who's the author? What's the year? And then there at the very end. So if I went to go back down here, it should probably be here. Um, should be one of these. But anyway, I want you to go ahead and I want you to fix some of these APA and turn them in. But it is actually a really good one. OK, and I really did like that. I'm looking for those differences, possibly similarities and support it with facts. Your ideas supported with facts. That's what I'm looking for in your papers. So that's what I want you to do with each of these assignments. If you did not get the grade of your choice, go through the rubric. Also, which was something new. Where is something new? I put them in the slides. Use that safe assign. 
Okay, you get a report and you may not have known how to use it. And I'm not I'm not using it because I'm out to get you. I'm not out to get and fail you. I'm not out to catch plagiarism. You get this report before I do. So I want you to go ahead and I want you to look at it. And if you feel that it's it's probably just missing internal citation. So if I go over here, I did add this recently on how to read them. So this is someone's paper. It got a 61 percent of um, uh, of issue. And so if I go further down, you can see if I go ahead and uh, view the report, it'll expand and it gives me the report and then I can click on view summary and you could see that here. If you click on these highlighted areas, you can be able to see where it possibly came from. A lot of this came from another university. Is it West uh, WGU? And so it probably is missing a lot of citations. So I want you to go ahead and I want you to fix that as well. So um, that's how you could be able to look at and review um, safe assigns. So you could be able to see that and be able to do that properly. So let's go ahead and we're going to week number two and then we'll wrap it up. Remember, these classes aren't very long, but you just got to watch it. And I show you how to pass the class. So today, our objective is to compare regulatory bodies and establish the legal and regulatory requirements, appraise potential risks associated with failure to comply uh, with legal and regulatory standards, examine regulatory standards and requirements that a company must meet, and explore regulatory standards and requirements for a specific industry, evaluate and organize the departmental process and procedures to increase compliance. You're expected to work on this for 25 hours, six hours of reading. Then, of course, the discussions pretty much were great. I had a lot of students that only put one. You had to have two. And I think everyone really gave me a good one. Those that only gave me one, I need two that look like that one, if that makes sense. And they had APA. And I know you had to do APA with proper citation and so forth. So thank you for getting that out a little bit of work on the project and you you can see that here and this is a written assignment so you don't have the powerpoint you'll have one more um towards the end so let's go into the content area in the content area i'm going to go down and uh let's go ahead and look at our assignment so in this what i want you to first do is i want you to watch that video watch the video read the assignment it is a two to three page paper. You're going to find two regulatory agencies and three legal requirements and how they relate to the market and the industry and three credible resources. Then I want you to go ahead and I want you to download this rubric, discuss the two regulatory agencies that regulate that how this industry and it, what is their role? Citation, your your idea, citation. Then identify the three, three legal requirements that relate to how products are marketed in and in the industry. The requirements can be general requirements that all companies must meet, or they can be industry or product specific. Ideas supported with facts. If you want, you can give me a header for each section, then write that sections. Because all I need to do is look at it, pull it out, you get your grade. Then discuss the potential risks to a key company stakeholders, those the employees, the customers, community, whomever, if the legal requirements research are not met. So uh, again, ideas supported with facts, internal citation, reference at the end. Discuss the importance of, of uh, supplementing a standardized process for complying with the legal and requirement guidelines. And there's your resources, three resources and proper APA, and you're done. You all can be able to do this, okay? Uh, I talked about the, okay. And I wanna make sure that it is clear that when I sent you an email, it wasn't because I'm picking on you, I'm not. All it is, is that this, this term is so short that if I don't get you on the ball or if I don't get you to come speak to me, first, you will become unmotivated and that's not fun. And then second, uh, it just costs you points, and then it's hard for you to rebuild. Everyone can still get an A in this class. I will see you all in the discussions. Have a great week. 
You have my phone number. Text me. Do whatever you need to do to get an A in this class because you can do it. I believe in all of you. I've read your discussions. I've read your PowerPoints. I'll see you next week. Have a great week. Bye-bye.